David Frangioni, the modern drummer rundown of an extraordinary drum kit, <laughs> drum arsenal. Danny Carey, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Man, thank you for allowing <laughs> us the time. access to this uh, masterpiece, really. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's just beautiful, you know? And so we're gonna go through the kit and, and kind of take all the different layers of it because this is truly a hybrid kit. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, as much craziness as here, it is utilitarian in a way, I've, I use it all, so it's, it, it, it has it's to be here. You know? It's incredible, <laughs> and, and, and the way you use it and the way that the, the music that, that is created from this is just uh, just beyond drums, really. I well, mean, I can't it's... take credit for all of that. <laughs> well, I'll give you credit for it. I'll take a fourth it. of it, you know, yeah. <laughs> just the, the, because you're playing melodies and rhythms and, and parts as much yeah. as you're playing drums in the traditional sense. Yeah, well, I try to contribute however I can, just to make the song do its job, you know, that's, that's my job, so. Yeah. Well, it sounds awesome, and we're gonna go through the kit. So let's start Perfect. with, let's start with the visual first, and then we'll get into the technical. You, this, I've never seen this finish before. Oh yeah, it's a one-off. Um, <laughs> Alex Gray was kind enough to paint a drum kit for me, and uh, he's responsible for a lot of the artwork on the last four Tool records, so. I thought it made sense to try to hit him up, and uh, he was kind enough to oblige me, and uh, you get this masterpiece. I'm, I'm so happy about it. It just fits with the whole theme of the last record, and that's and it's beautiful. And it's a one of one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this is it. Yeah. And, and now the gong drum has on the other side, yeah. but I understand that's a <laughs> portrait of some. Yeah, that's me. That's you. <laughs> with my skin missing. And uh, it's kind of a sonic diagram. You could see like the, the native, the sound of the earth going into my ear and then going into my brain and, the, and coming out. Awesome, <laughs> and, and that's, <laughs> that's Alex Gray. Yeah, that's all Alex Gray, yeah, the wow. whole kit. Wow, know, awesome. And did he do, what about Well, actually this? these are, are my design, actually. And my buddy Ryan McClement helped me with this. You know, it's kind of, more astrological and cosmic symbols for my again custom yeah it's custom a, yeah these are the, the only ones that exist yeah, yeah wow yeah, yeah. so you got seven of them yeah yeah i have 20 but <laughs> i use but, seven in this kit you know? okay gotcha and a couple of pedals on the ground that also trigger um, battery that i run through a mac laptop right here that, that way I can have uh, different sounds and all these pads for each song that we perform. So let's yeah. talk about the pads. Okay. Who, who makes the pads? Um, Mandala pads. Yeah, Synesthesia is the name of the company. My friend Vincent DeFranco made these. These are actually a prototype, but he is uh, selling them. Like, okay. like kind of a different version of them. They're more of a standalone one-off pad, but you can make them work with each other and stuff. But these all go to a one brain that plugs into my my computer and they mm -hmm. what I understand from Joe is that they connect via cat yeah cat yeah five, so they're and then an interface breaks it out to MIDI over USB right and then batter and then it triggers battery as the sound correct source. correct and that gets rid of a lot of the a lot of the latency by going the cat cat cables and it's and multi-zone yeah yeah they read um, MIDI like 0 to 127 from the center to the edge so I can apply that to any parameter like panning or Oh, yeah. uh, wow. Dynamics or opening filters or you know it, it's kind sure. of endless in that way you know and, and, oh, I, and I can also program it to where there's uh, three different sections in here where I could have a, a conga slap in the middle and a conga you know open or you know make it do three different 
some samples that can be manipulated in that way too. Wow, you know? it is endless. So you've got the entire MIDI controller range that yeah, can be triggered yeah. <laughs> totally. as you change location on the pad. Yeah, and yeah. And the sounds, can, the samples can change in basically three zones. Yeah, and a lot of time dynamics. I use two because it's pretty difficult to really hit that small yeah, of a thing. Especially but, at a live show. But a lot of, so normally I will have like one sound here and then use this for the end. It's, it works really well for bongos and congas and like African drums and stuff because a lot of time you know you'll get a slap or a open right, two, two right. sounds. And how about the rim? That's another sound? Um, I can't, I don't really use the rim much on this one. There's one that's like kind of set up I use more like a snare pad, the mm -hmm. number two here. Mm -hmm. And um, that one I, I every once in a while I could use some rims on it or something. But I, I pretty much just play the surfaces because it's much more interface you know, sure. controllable you know, you know. and then you have the wave drum the yeah the old classic drum, yeah, right? that was from the early 90s i believe uh yeah. they make they make the newer ones but uh i know i got attached to this one it's it's more analog it has a little more character it's like fm synthesis and it has a uh, kind of algorithms that you can start with and then manipulate them in a lot of different ways and uh, it has a little more punch and little which I need actually to get over Adam and Justin's volume. You know, <laughs> it has a lot more character. You need to have things that speak well to get over their volume. Sure, know? sure, and and then have that that cut through. Yeah. So you've modified the sounds and yeah. created what works for you using that. And a lot of them are kind of tuned, so you you definitely have to tune them to whatever key we're in and right. things like that. So, right, right. Yeah. And then I guess staying with electronics, we have a hand sonic. Yeah, yeah, I've leaned on this pretty heavily on 10,000 Days, and on the last record, too, it has quite a few parts that I use on that. And uh, I use it a lot in between songs, too, to kind of fill the space while the guys are tuning and stuff, oh, so I can cool. kind of just make up little ditties on that. And playing the actual <laughs> pads there, not triggering externally, but using that. Yeah, I use my fingers on this oh, all the time. Cool. I really don't use sticks on it much, because it's, it's more friendly to fingers, I think. Right, you know? right, yeah. sure. And... Then we have the Bukla. Yeah, Bukla Marimba Lumina. Th this is... <laughs> these this, are tough to come yeah, by. Yeah, these are rare. <laughs> yeah, I think there's 10 or 12 or something. It's, it's some ridiculously low number. I, I saw one at a NAMM show or something ages ago, and uh, I always wanted one, and I called Don Bukla, and he had quit making them, but he said, well, I might have enough parts in my garage to put one more together. So this is the last wow, one. <laughs> you got the last serial number. Yeah, that's oh, it, that's yeah. the most collectible, too. <laughs> yeah. The first and the last. Yeah, they're collectible anyway. Yeah, they I are. got really but, lucky. But it was the last really kind one. of him to do that for me. Yeah. Wow. And it holds up on the road. Yeah, so far we have a really nice case for it, of course. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's pretty durable. There's not too much to go wrong with it. I mean, the... Are the sounds yeah. inside or are you triggering? It has internal sounds, but I've been running it through a virus that I have a little oh, rack mount unit here. Okay, yeah, so that's yeah. for the, the book. I, I just use it pretty much for one one or two melodies on this tour, so it's it's I'm not getting the the value out of it really on this run, but it looks very cool. Oh, you know? it's super cool. And it sounds great when you play it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great instrument. We have the yeah, Octopad. The good old Octopad, yep, yeah. Yep, SBD30. Yeah, yeah this, this was good, more of one of the last things I added to the kit, actually, but uh, I used it for an intro on one of our tunes, and it's here it is, and it's great again. I kind of use it; a, it's really similar to the Hand Sonic, you know, just for filler and embellishments in between tunes. And Quick whatnot. access to just sounds. Yeah, that it's you great play. that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And are you using the sounds internal to it? You're not triggering. Yeah, I'm just so using what's in there. In there. Yeah, or whatever you've loaded and programmed. Yeah, my own sounds. I pretty much stick to the laptop because I can load mega samples sure. and stuff and play them on here the, the, uh, pretty much with these other than tuning and tweaking the sounds a little right. bit sure yeah. sure and then we have something that you don't see in a drummer rig very often <laughs> yeah. especially yeah, the way that you that. you play it we have a modular euro rack essentially right. Right. Yeah. and so what what's the idea behind this well um i was always a big billy cobham fan i remember on the spectrum record he did a couple of solos, like that sounded like maybe it was to an ARP sequencer or mm -hmm, something, you sure, know, and that always sure. struck me as something really cool. So when we were doing the last album, we did a piece called the Chocolate Chip Trip because they gave us chocolate chip cookies every day at the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Do and, we have uh, that in common too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we love chocolate yeah, chip cookies. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was kind of my ode to, to the Spectrum album, I guess, and Billy, because he's such a, one of my heroes. and. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, it's 
pretty much just straight ahead synthesizer filters and things that uh, Peter Grenader and Kevin Key from Skinny Puppy made these. Um, Plan B was the name of his company back then. And then this is the sequencer and uh, a file uh, sample holder. And then this is kind of more effects down here, reverbs and uh, okay. delays and things like that. I and, see. So the know. sequencer and is running, these are the, the oscillators. Yeah, exactly. Actually the sound Oscillate, oscillators and filters pretty much oh, up nice. here. And, and some VCAs and things, a little bit of other stuff down here. but. Uh, that's another sequencer there that kind of controls filters and things. But uh, then like make noise, they're, they're famous in this world for good effects and stuff. So, and yeah. then this is running the sequencer now, right? So that'll yeah, keep yeah. running and then you'll just yeah, you'll you turn it have up. Yeah, you a little bit on it maybe. I have like eight different voices and I just kind of pull them in and out. And I have different programs I can put it into seven or 15 or oh, wow. six or 12 or whatever. Right, so right. I, I try to mix it up night to night just to keep it interesting for oh, me awesome. and the crowd, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Right, so it's, that, so it's it's really, you're performing what the, whatever the sequence is gonna be. Right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, a, it's I have like, to It's kind a creative of, decision on the fly, essentially. Yeah, 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 pretty much, yeah. I try to keep it, that part completely improv, you know, that keeps it interesting because, you know, after you're on the, road playing the same songs for months at a time you know you're going to keep something inspiring fresh. young fresh yeah. i love it well yeah, it's yeah. it's it's amazing yeah, so now okay. let's get to the drums we have yeah, this yeah. this awesome sonar drum set yeah yeah i had the the sonar guys i was a big fan of the old uh signature babingas and stuff from the 80s you know and uh and i found that uh I really loved the small toms that had the really thick shells, mm -hmm. and uh, but I found sometimes the the low end didn't resonate quite as well in those, and I liked the thinner shells. So what I did, I had them make each shell. This one's really thick, and they gradually get thinner as the drums get bigger. That's how, and it really worked well for me. I don't. And the bass drums Maybe they too. didn't believe me because I don't think they sell these. <laughs> but the bass drums are pretty thin too. Okay. And, um, and I use a 22 on the right and a 24 on the left. Oh, okay, I see. Um, I always tuned the left one lower just because it kind of made more sense to me when I was doing double bass stuff. But then it also has another advantage because, uh, you know, the toms get bigger, so I don't have to raise stuff up as high when the drums get bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, this yeah. one's lower, so it was yep. really convenient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's, and, and this is SQ2? What are the shell um, yeah, close to it, but uh, you know, it's been you know, like I said, they don't really sell these shells, but uh, so these are really custom. They're yeah, just... yeah, I, I really loved when they came out with the vintage lugs, kind of like the really old ones from the fit, the sixties yeah. and stuff. So yeah, they I almost look like the old Slingerland. Yeah, lugs. yeah, 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 that's yeah the cool. old teardrops. You yeah, know, so yeah. I, I really was. Oh, like so the everything is really kind of sleek, you know. custom. Yeah, yeah. And how yeah. about the snare drum? The snare drums, are HLD five ninety. They made those. Back, I think about the same time they came out with the real heavy signature stuff. It's like they're pretty rare, though. Um, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. I see yeah, I go, when I first got my endorsement, I got that snare drum was the first thing I wanted just because I loved it so much. Yeah. And, uh, and it's heavy. Yeah, extremely. Probably <laughs> 50 pounds yeah. or something. Yeah. I would and it guess. It came in that big, thick case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a beauty. I've got a, I've got a 10 lug and a 12 lug, and. Um, I got the, the 12 lug from John Tempesta on a trade, you know, oh, wow. but I wanted to have one because I, I go through two or three snare heads every night when I'm playing, so I'm hit pretty hard. And uh, so that way I can swap it out and keep a consistency going. But sometimes I like the variety too. I use a couple other drums in the arsenal. I have a Dunnett back there that he made for me and I, and a few other things, you know, but uh, always so deep. Just very, always yeah, usually like eights. Eight. I like eights and okay. it's, it's just kind of my sound, I guess, that yeah. I've gotten used to, yeah. And Roto Tom, is that an O to Bruford? Pretty much, I'd swear off, and Terry, of course. Uh, Terry, you know, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I was, I was a big Bozio fan. I loved all the missing person stuff sure. back in the day. And sure. UK and all that stuff, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I was using two or three of them up here for a while instead of the racks, because oh. I kind of liked the clean cut that they had, but I liked the beef of the floor toms. Okay. But uh, just for the, 
I kind of wanted to get a heavier sound going, so I put in like real toms now and just have the one roto because I would like that timbre for certain things. I, I use it kind of like a timbale in some ways. That's oh, why okay. I have the really thin head on it. Oh, I see. And give it that cut, you know. Oh, okay. I found if I use the thicker head on it, it just kind of sounds more similar to a regular tom, and I didn't really want that. I so it's to have a different it's, texture. You know? It's really like this as the core kit and, and yeah then the roto. that's more of an embellishment it, right yeah. i see awesome. yeah, like these or you know the pads or something, right you know, right you know, you know. and then on the symbol setup we have your signature right yeah 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 and that's a 22. yeah 22 it's pretty heavy and it was kind of like a dry heavy 22 but i made a few changes they hammered it differently and the bell's a little different and the the purple actually changes the, the sound to it and dries it up a little more so it's okay. a little more sticky. Okay. I usually don't ride hitting the, the shaft of the stick on it. It's all pretty much bead and bell to, to oh, okay. make it more articulate. Right. That's just kind of my sound, I suppose. Right, right, yeah. right. So that so that way you get a lot of detail from it and it cuts through the yeah. amplification. Yeah, that's the goal to try to get through the, the volume up <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of nuanced symbols considering how loud that you're, you're you know, like yeah. all the little, again, you and I have talked about this a lot, like our influence by Carl Palmer. Oh, and, yeah. You know, yeah, some of these, big <laughs> these greats where he did that, like one of the, in Bruford, like some of the first guys to do it. You've yeah. taken Stuart it. Stuart definitely was Stuart, a big him put in that way. You, you've <laughs> taken it to a very unique, you've made it your own, you know, and, and, I, and I love that. And what's the, and, and there are everywhere basically around the kit. Yeah, I just kind of figure out, use the space since it's at a premium. <laughs> so, rather than hitting the bell on these. I use the bell a lot on the ride, but it's just kind of more interesting textures that I could add by throwing little things on top of so them. So for fills so, and, yeah. and to potentially sometimes drive drive a tune? Sure, yeah, yeah, but mainly for colors, you know, when okay. the song needs it. Yeah, right. you know. And we have the splashes, no closed hat, just the one hat. Yeah, that, just the one hat. The space was kind of, like I said, at a premium over here. I really wanted to have my pads on this side and this side. It just feels easier to play that way. And uh, but you have so that. I moved the hi hat over here, and that's just on the the cable, you know. Yeah. And then you have that effect symbol. Yeah, that's kind of just a trashy thing, you okay. know, man. So. And then another China. A bit. Yeah, this is a yeah a 22 thin. This one I've I've been using those ever since I first got my endorsement, I fell in love with them. They quit making them for a while, but I think they're doing them again now, you know, maybe maybe by demand, hopefully people, will, <laughs> yeah. I hope I help them out that yeah, way. I'm, I'm sure, know? I'm sure. It's, it's, then I have the Novo great. chine on this side. It's, that's an extremely loud symbol. You know, oh, okay. A 24. Yeah, yeah, wow. that's, that's a powerful one. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, you have to treat it with care. Yeah. <laughs> It'll cut through anything. Yeah. And, and everyone, when in the link you're going to see all the sizes we're going to go into all the details okay. so we don't have to go through them this very okay. second um but we'll have all the details of exactly the sizes of the cymbals and the drums and two gongs so yeah yeah you have this, this bad boy yeah it's a 38 symphonic i believe you know i had a 40 for a while it got kind of beat and um it was a little tough without warming it up. This is faster and more responsive because I usually don't have time to warm it up. It's like right in the middle of the songs and stuff. So okay. I just give it a good whack and it responds really well. So and the other one's more of a, the Earth Gong. It's a, more of a, I don't know, it a looks novelty like a, item. It looks like a, well, it's a showpiece. <laughs> oh yeah. But it's cool. And I can do a little solo-y thing on yeah, it. It's, it's, awesome. it's just, what a genius instrument though. The, the amount of sounds and overtones and things that come out of it. It's just, it's inspiring in itself. You can just hit it once and be mesmerized. You know, it's a beautiful instrument. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and every night you play that during the show. I have been on this run and the one before, you know, I kind of, sometimes I'll lose it just to do something different, but, uh, it's fun now. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. And then your bass drum pedals, you're playing the Pearl. Yeah, the pedals. old Eliminators. You know? Oh, yeah. OK. Those yeah. are the Eliminators. Yeah. Okay. I, back when I first started playing, I had sonar pedals. The I think they, I don't know if they were signature ones, but they had kind of a really extreme offset cam. Okay. And I got so used to that when I tried to use a pedal that didn't have cam, it just didn't feel right. So these have the interchangeable little cams you can put on them. And I found the one I like. I think I'm using the blue ones. So, but, uh, and double chain. Yeah, double chain yeah, drive. yeah. And the beater's way back, almost yeah. parallel. But the know? spring is really, uh, really almost zero tension. You know, like when it's resting, there's, there's, it's 
you I can see, see that it's almost nothing yeah. there. So it, yeah. it doesn't fight me too hard, but I like right. having the, the, that amount of whip, you know, it gives me more volume because I can, when you swing the pedal that hard, you know, and right. I like these bigger Danmar, Danmars on them because they, uh, they seem to generate a little more low end with the, the flam slam. Thing. They make a great be. beater. Denmark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I snapped some of them for a while, and then I think they they beat them up. Yeah, they beat them up or something. <laughs> I broke two or three of them. <laughs> I think they use hardened steel now or something. I, I don't think anybody could break those. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, this anything else <laughs> we should know about the kit? We have your Vic Firth sticks. Yeah, yeah. I'm good old Vic. You know, man. We I designed that with them ages ago, and then it's doing really well. You know, yeah. It has a little bit of a handle in there, so you, know, you can see that. So yeah. it kind of feels good on your hand. Like oh. if your hands get really sweaty, you can still hang on for oh, yeah. dear life, you know? Sure, sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of neat by cutting that down a little bit, it transferred more of the weight out front, so it has kind of a nice leverage to it. And it's working for me, you know? So. Anything else we should cover on the kit? Um, God, I think that about does it. Yeah. This yeah. is an incredible kit. Before I do our <laughs> outro, um, can you take a spin around the kit for a second? Oh, <laughs> I'm not warmed up, but I maybe just something like and trigger some electronics. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got nice Jeez. monitors up I mean, here. Yeah. But the <laughs> sounds just in playing is oh, well, not warmed up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Danny Carey. You're Thank more than you welcome. so much, man. It's always Thank you, great sir. to see you. It was a pleasure. Yeah, man, and, and this is an incredible rig. <laughs> Check out all the info in the link below, and you're going to see all the details about the kit, and we're very grateful for this opportunity. Thank you to everyone on the tool team who made this possible, and especially for your just being so gracious and, and sharing this with all the drummers out there. You're an inspiration, and uh, and this is just fantastic. Yeah, I'm really lucky I have Joe Paul and Tim taking care of me. They've been with me a long time. and uh, They're great guys. I had the cool. privilege of Making meeting Making it all them. possible. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Danny Carey. Thank you, sir. Modern drummer. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>